Lola's head. And um, this is really kind of groomer's choice or, or customer's choice also. I mean, she's got a real cute body right now, but we can't even see her eyes. We have no idea what Lola looks like. Um, and there's, there's a lot of different variations. Now, this, this client does not like a poodly look. So we're going to do maybe kind of like a modified Portuguese water dog type style where we're going to take her sides a little shorter, kind of a short top knot and a little bit shorter muzzle. So I'm going to start and I'm, I'm using my KM2 and I'm going to use the, the, um, the Zero which is the 5 8 inch snap on comb. And I think I'm just going to kind of take some of this bulky side hair off. Skim some of this off. So we wanted to have kind of a short underjaw. Like I said, they don't they don't want it to look like a poodle. And there's no way she's gonna look like a lab. So we just have to make this up. Now one thing for me, if I had a dog like this and the people just said you can do whatever you wanted to, I would take these ears down short because right now the ears just, they don't, they don't blend in with the rest of the work we have going on with the dog's body. They don't look natural. They're too big. So I would take them down probably in feather them and thinning shear just around the shape of the ear just to make it look a little bit, you know, a little bit better balanced with the rest of the dog's body. So that's one of my pet peeves is the really long ears like that. But some customers are adamant about not cutting them. So you kind of have to do what they tell you. Now, on her, looking, looking at Lola, when I, when I um, you know, pull her hair back and I look at her eyes, the pigmentation around her, her eyes is a little bit light. So rather than go in there with a clipper, um, I'm just going to kind of clean out the inside corners of her eyes with my thinning shears. Um, if you want to use a clipper, use, use your longest blade. Like if I were going to um, scoop this out, I would probably use my nine, the nine setting on um, my Bravera or Cremato or Arco, any one of those wall five adjustment blades. Um, you don't want to go so close because I, I don't want this, when you've got this nice soft plush look, I don't want to have this pink bald spot staring out at me. So, um, you know, that's definitely an area where they tend to get a lot of debris and a lot of matting and a lot of times their eyes run. So you want to get it close enough, but um, you want to be careful not to go in there and really bald it out. Okay, now I think I'm going to I give her a little bit of a visor so you can see that I'm, I'm holding my, I have my curve shears and I'm holding them at an angle so I'm going from the outside corner of one eye to the outside corner of the other eye. And that's, that's going to really, it's kind of, kind of set our eyes in and open them up a little bit more so we're actually going to be able to see the true Lola inside. You like that, the true Lola? True Lola. I'm going to take these, these sides down to match what I did with the snap-on. Flip that ear back. Because this is also an area that's going to tend to get very matted on her, so we don't want to have to leave a lot of excess bulk here on the sides of her face. And again, you know, like I said, it's kind of, it's, it's knowing the dog, knowing how often the dog comes in, um, you know, whether the client is going to be able to brush the dog at home and all that stuff. So a there's a lot of variables on any of these trims, and you've got to kind of play with them and figure them out, whether or not, you know, the, the people like it a little fluffier. I mean, you can do so many different style heads on a dog like this, but don't, don't do it if the dog is going to come in a big solid mat the next time. So, and you have to know, with a coat like this, I would recommend this dog come in at least every four weeks. I'd say once a week. <laughs> <laughs> the Golden Doodles and Labradoodles that I do that I keep in coat like this, they're my once a week customers because the ones that go every four to six weeks that have that really thick undercoat, they just get so matted up. Especially if the people don't brush them, it's, you know, yeah. it's one thing. If the people are religious about brushing them, it's another thing. But, of course, my clients, you know, they don't want to brush their dogs. They think they'd rather just pay somebody to do it. 
Well, and a lot of the a lot of your clients um, tend to get dogs for their children, and they expect their four and five year olds to brush out the dogs, and that's not going to happen. And if the mother or father don't have time to do it, then the dog ends up a matted mess with lollipops and candy and then stuck they blame in them. the kids. Yeah. All right. Now this this hair here, I'm gonna I'm gonna take all that off because that's just going to be the hair she's going to lick into her mouth anyway, like that. 